Hi, Alyssa, Ricky, and Beverly. This is Dean Butler. I played Almanzo Wilder on Little House on the Prairie, and Chris, who I'm assuming is husband and father here, uh, has sent out a message to me to send you a shout out. A shout out to his loved ones. Hello, loved ones. I'm very glad to be sending you this message today. I am talking to you from Los Angeles today. Uh, it is a, a beautiful, warm morning. Of course, every morning these days is warm. I don't know where you all are, but and I'm sure, given the way the summer is going, that you're someplace warm as well. Um, at least the odds are in favor of you being someplace warm as well. Um, so I'm just want, oh, also also Chris says that uh, want me to make sure to mention, or he wanted me to know that his mother. And he and his mother, when they were years ago, years ago, were also huge fans of Little House on the Prairie and uh, and big Almanzo fans. And um, so apparently your family's been at this Little House thing for a long time. I mean, for me this year, it is 42 years since I started my Little House adventure. And uh, I never in my never in my wildest dreams would I have imagined that I would still be um, connected to Little House, talking about Little House, appreciative of Little House. You know, when you're a, a young person and something wonderful happens, you don't necessarily look long term at what it means. Um, and you know, Little House. Little House has gone on and on with or without my uh, immediate help and support. Um, but I knew from very early on in my time working on the program that it was special and that it touched people in a very unique way. Um, I loved the messaging, uh, messaging that the program offered to people about community, about family, about, um, about resolve, about overcoming adversity, about sharing, you know, about generosity, um, disappointment, how we handle these things. Little House was filled with those kinds of messages. They were, the episodes were little morality plays of, um, you know, of disappointment and redemption. Um, and Michael was Michael really understood, and I say Michael, uh, Michael Landon really understood what he was trying to do with this program. He said to me, you know, early on in, the, uh, in my life in the program, he said, people will be watching and loving this program long after we're all gone. And at the time I was probably 25 or something, 24, 25 years old. And, you know, when you're 24, 25 years old, you really don't think about those things. You, I mean, to, to think, I mean, you know, your whole life's in front of you and you're thinking that you've got, I mean, you're not even thinking about how much time you have. You're just living your life. You're sort of in the prime of your life. And Michael, who was, you know, he was 20 years older than I was, 20 years. I've never sat down to calculate that. Um, but, you know, for me, Michael was, you know, really, uh, you know, an older adult. I think he was about 20 years older than I am. And, uh, you know, and as accomplished as he was, 20 years may as well have been 100 years. He just, he was, Michael was a superstar. He was, uh, he was, um, a creative powerhouse. He was, um, you know, Michael was, Michael just lived his life big. And um, so when he said that this is going to go a lot long, longer than we are, it'll outlive all of us, I, I was just sort of not sure what to think about that. But it was, you know, it stuck with me. I've never forgotten the comment, and I've repeated it often. Um, but he knew this, and I think he knew it because his previous great success, Bonanza, 
which he was not as involved in. I mean, he was obviously totally involved in it on camera and increasingly involved in it behind the camera. But Michael was not the driving creative force of Bonanza, he, but he was the recipient of great driving creative force by a man named David Dortord. And, and Michael became one of those people who was really an important creative presence in that show. Um, but, you know, Michael, Michael knew. He knew when something was good and he understood about what an audience, what his audience wanted. And his audience wanted hope, he, they wanted positivity, they wanted goodness, they wanted sweetness, they wanted, um, they wanted a fundamentally optimistic view about the, the way the world worked. They wanted to see a loving family, no matter how that family looked. You know, in Bonanza, it was three sons and his father, and their father. Um, on Little House, it was a more it was more traditional families, mom, mothers, fathers, and children. Um, but the commonality that Michael shared, and that was really important to Michael, was love and affection and respect and decency within the family and within the community. And he brought those messages week after week after week to Little House. And, you know, and it's, it's so interesting when you think about Little House, you know, Little House was filled with tragedy. There was, you know, the, the dog dies, the, you know, uh, a family friend dies, the, the land, the crop is lost, the, you know, I mean, just, it goes on and on, and I'm sorry I can't go through the litany of tragedies, but, you know, you know, you watch the program, there was, the, the blizzard came, the hurricane came, the, the you know, the, the crick, the locusts ate the crops, the, the well went dry, Carrie falls down the well, I mean, it, it you know, all of these things. But through all that tragedy, there was, there were always positive endings and positive lessons to be learned about acceptance and goodness and and um, getting along with our fellow man. You know, there was always a message about getting along with each other, and I don't think there's lessons have ever been more important than they are now. You know, and and. Those lessons have always been important. They are universally important and they are timeless lessons, which is of course, one of the reasons why they resonate so beautifully in Little House. And, and you know, I always say about Little House, it was old when it was new, it was never cool, it was never in fashion, so it could never go out of fashion. You know, it, it was always a time capsule of a way of being it was a time capsule of a, of a look at humanity. And because it was not set in our time today, people could watch it and be sort of disarmed by it. They weren't, you know, you weren't thinking about the fashion of the day and the hairstyles of the day and the cars and the, the houses and all of that. Everything was of a different time. So it was always it was a, we, there was separation between the world of Little House and the world that the audience was living in. And yet the audience could step into this world every Monday night or every Wednesday night, depending on when you started watching the program. And you could step into this world of, of another time and see people interacting with each other in a way that was loving, generous, sometimes not loving and generous, but it always worked out in the end. And I think, that's the big lesson, is that things work out in the end. Things can work out in the end if we're willing to try to have them work out in the end. And, and I say that knowing that we have probably, in our modern history now, never have never lived in a time where there is such an overt difference between people as there is right now. And it's harder to look the other way now, or it's harder to accept the things that people say if you don't agree with the things they say and the opinions they have and 
all that. It's harder. But Lil House offers a pathway to consider acceptance of people, all people. No matter their, no matter their, you know, their race, their religion, their, uh, their country of origin, whatever it is, there's a path to acceptance of people. We can get along with each other, but it's a choice. We have to choose to get along with each other. And I, this is a long way around. I mean, you know, Chris asked me to tell you something about the show. I, I think that's... What I've been talking about is really one of the essential ingredients of the show is stories, characters, and themes that have the capacity to bring people together and have, and have people see themselves as part of a larger community and feel like they can be okay in that community, even if they're, no matter who they are or what they are. They can be part of a larger community, but it takes all of us to do that. So, you know, I, I hope that all of you, Alyssa, Ricky, and Beverly, will continue to watch Little House and enjoy it and see it in the context of a vehicle that can help the world be a better place. And I really I don't want to make turn this into, you know, Little House is not the magic bullet that's going to fix the world. I mean, that... It's obviously ridiculous. It's all of us, but it's all of us that are the magic bullets. Each and every one of us, millions and millions of us, that have an opportunity to make the world a, a little better place in just one little act at a time. And I think that's what Little House celebrates. That's what Little House encourages in all of us. Um, I appreciate the fact Chris said that you know that one of the things you love about the program is the is the um, the positive morals um, that the program provides, um, and of course this is what I've been referencing, you know, throughout our little uh, our, our little conversation here. Actually, <laughs> it's my monologue to you, um, but you know. Um, uh, Alyssa, Ricky, Beverly, Chris, uh, Chris's mom. Um, thank you for uh, being part of the Little House journey. Um, you know, it's 42 years for me. It's 47 years for those who just, who started out with it all those years ago. And when it first premiered on NBC on September 11th, 1974, Little House has been on the air in the United States and around the world continuously ever since. It has never been off the air and it has been on network television, local television, cable television. It's been on VHS, uh, VHS, DVD, Blu-ray, and now the show is streaming uh, on services um, so that it can always be found and watched and enjoyed and shared with those you love. Um, it has been my, it has been one of the great joys of my life, one of the great gifts, an incalculably great gifts that I have received. I mean, this program, my involvement in this program has touched every aspect of my life and uh, absolutely made it better. There, there's no question that my life is better because of the experience that I had all those years ago. And because of that, I've stayed, tried to stay close to it. And I intend uh, to stay close to it until, until the very end. And as you know, as, as Michael was prescient in saying, I mean, he certainly was prescient for himself. The show has gone on long after he passed. I mean, Michael, Michael left us 30 years ago on July 1st. Um, and I don't think any of us saw that coming, but the show has gone on 30 years and has been, has kept him, his memory, his values, his goodness in the public eye for all those years. Um, and we're all just so grateful to be a part of that. All of us who were there with him are incredibly grateful to be a part of that. He was, you know, 
it was his world and we all just played a part in it and very grateful to have done so. Listen to Alyssa, Ricky, Beverly, uh, Chris, thank you all for being Little House fans. Thank you for, Chris, thank you for requesting this message. Uh, I hope you all have a great remainder of your summer. Uh, take care of yourselves. You know, I, I think we're at a very uh, tricky time with this virus now, and it seems to be making a big comeback um, around the country and around the world. We all have to continue to be careful. Uh, I know people are tired of it, but I think, you know, wear your masks, watch your social distancing, wash your hands. If, if we don't all step up and make the right moves, we're going to be in this, continue to be in this situation a lot longer. It's, it's all up to us. The world is up to us. Enjoy it. Um, wow. I, I, th I, I can't believe I'm going on like this. But listen, I'll stop now. All the best to all of you. And um, have a great rest of your summer and great rest of the year. And all the best to you. Take care. Bye-bye.